Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. How are you doing tonight? Tonight, I'm going to be telling you guys another story, and that is going to be about my experience with the physics PhD qualifying examination at the University of California, Irvine. Now, before I continue, I need to make a couple of comments. The first is that the qualifying examination that I took has now been changed in the sense that the physics department has now opted to replace it with something else, and I think those changes are going to be going into effect either a year from now or two years from now, possibly. But when I took the examination, the qualifying exam, or just the qual, as we called it, was in its sort of last stages of being taught the old-fashioned way. The second point that I need to make is that there are actually two separate PhD tracks at UCI for physics. You can do the normal physics PhD route, where you would be specializing in a field like astrophysics, particle physics, biophysics, condensed matter, plasma, and so on. Or there was a program, or there is a program, known as the Chemical and Materials Physics Program, or the CHAMP program for short. And this is important because both tracks have separate courses and requirements. And in the CHAMP program case, you could either get the PhD in chemistry or physics. So you would apply to either the chemistry or physics department, but then uh, if you were accepted into the CHAMP program, you could effectively work with anyone from either physics or chemistry or, or even engineering. So it was a very interdisciplinary um, track. And I was actually on the track when I first came into UCI. So I applied to the CHAMP program when I came to UCI, and then I realized in my second quarter that I really wanted to pursue astrophysics instead, so I, I switched. So I switched into the normal physics PhD track, but like I said before, this kind of put me at a disadvantage for the qualifying examination because I had anticipated to be in the CHAMP program. And since I was in the CHAMP program my first quarter, I didn't take the normal courses you would take for the, the regular physics PhD track. So for example, I missed out on classical mechanics, which is one of the core subjects that you are tested on for the qualifying exam. So the qualifying examination in terms of its structure, was supposed to test you on four different subjects. I already mentioned classical mechanics, but it also would teach you or test you on statistical mechanics, electromagnetism, and quantum mechanics. So I had, I had missed the classical mechanics course my first quarter, and because I was in the CHAMP program still at the start of my second quarter, I didn't sign up for the normal physics PhD statistical mechanics course. And so when I wanted to switch in, that course actually conflicted with my teaching assignment. So I was a TA that quarter, and I effectively had to miss half of the stat mech lectures because I was just teaching during that time. So as you can already tell, I was a little bit at a disadvantage going into the qualifying exam, which happens in the spring quarter, so the third quarter of your first year. It takes place on the first three days of the quarter and the way that it works is that statistical mechanics and classical mechanics are are on the first day and they're 90 minutes each and they're back to back so classical mechanics first then statistical mechanics with like a 10 minute break there then the second day was electromagnetism and that was three hours of electromagnetism and then the third day was quantum mechanics and three hours of that so that's how the test the tests were broken down, and we were allowed to bring the textbook that that course had used that particular year. So, for example, for classical mechanics, it was Goldstein uh, classical mechanics. For ENM, it was either Jackson electrodynamics. Sorry, no, it was just Jackson electrodynamics. For quantum mechanics, it was like Sakurai or this other book known um, as BAME quantum mechanics, written by Gordon BAME. And then statistical mechanics was. Um, Pothria. Pothria was the author of that textbook. So we were allowed to bring in the textbooks that we use in the courses to help us. Um, and the the recommendation I got from older graduate students was that you should try and aim for at least 50% on all the exams. Because if you got a 50% on all the exams, that was essentially uh, almost a sure guarantee you would pass the comprehensive examination as a whole, because you had to pass all of those exams, all four of those exams, to be considered sort of qualified or shown to be uh, knowledgeable in those subjects. So that was the idea. And 
the professors who taught the courses of those subjects that year would also write the qualifying examination. In terms of what they were testing you on, the sort of email I remember getting sort of showing all the topics that we should probably know for all these subjects was essentially just the whole thing. It's like, just, just know everything essentially, which sounds very intimidating. And to me, as someone who didn't take, you know, one and a half courses, um, that seemed almost impossible, right? So I effectively had to teach myself graduate level classical mechanics and gaps in statistical mechanics that I missed because I, I just couldn't attend those lectures. So the way that I studied was that I tried to study as early as possible. I tried to study a few months in advance of the qualifying exam, like as soon as I switched into the normal physics PhD track, because I knew I had my work cut out for me because I, I just didn't take those courses. So I needed to put in the work and study for them. But it wasn't easy because my first year I was TAing. So I already mentioned before that I was TAing, but I, I was TAing essentially all throughout my first year. And that took up anywhere between 10 to 20 hours every week. And I'd usually do my grading at night. So by the time I'd be done grading, I'd already be very tired and it'd be very hard to study anything else at that time. I remember the the week before the qualifying exam was spring break or what should have been spring break because to be honest, I didn't really get a spring break. I don't think anyone in the physics PhD program got a spring break that year because I spent every day just studying like from morning until night because I really felt that if I didn't, I was not going to pass the exams. And I remember just thinking to myself during that week, like, I just can't wait till this is all over. I just want this to be over with. And almost in a way, like, as if I didn't care about the result. It's just I wanted the whole process to be over, this this sort of torture of having to study night, like morning till night. And I remember taking the examinations, and surprisingly, the, the two subjects that I didn't know the most, because I didn't take the courses all the way, right, like classical and statistical mechanics, those were on the first day, back to back, and I actually felt really good about them. And I was like, wow, I got through like the hardest part for me personally. And then electromagnetism was the second day. I was three hours of that. And I felt really good on that one. I really felt like I knew my stuff in e and uh, the, the professor had problems that reminded me a lot of what we did in, in the class. So I felt pretty confident there. But then quantum mechanics came. And wow, I'm not the only one who felt that exam was 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 a uh, was something else um and this is coming from somebody who to this day will say quantum mechanics was my favorite core subject in undergrad and i really liked quantum mechanics that's just that's just the thing i really liked quantum mechanics and i found that test to be super hard and i just remember feeling wow i don't really know how i did now because i think i did okay in classical and statistical mechanics I think I did good on E&M, but quantum, I'm, I'm not so sure. But um, in the end, it worked out. I ended up passing all four tests, and I was able to move on and advance to the next stage of my graduate student career. But I, I really look back on it as a sign of me, you know, really going for something I wanted to do. I really wanted to do astrophysics, and this is what I needed to do to get there. So I could give myself a goal. I studied really hard to to achieve this goal, and in the end, it worked out. So I think it's just a testament to if you really, really want something, you just need to work as hard as you possibly can and believe. Yeah, yeah believe in yourself. I mean, I, I, I definitely felt doubt during that time, but in the end, I, I, I knew that I'm a decently good test taker and that if I put in the work... I didn't feel like there was any way I could fail those exams if I had the book and all the studying I put into it. And in the end, that's essentially what happened. I passed. And that's the important thing. And I haven't thought about it since. So that's essentially my experience with the physics PhD qualifying exam. I hope you found that insightful. I appreciate you guys watching these videos. I'll see you guys in the future. Take it easy, everyone.